Hi folks, Gamebook here again, and this video is a little bit different from what I normally do. It's Armour 3 again, and yep, it's related to Ahoy World and their Invade Nanak servers. But, as a lot of people have probably picked up Armour 3 because of the Steam sale that's just ended, and a bit of inspiration from a fellow Ahoy World forum member called Fernev, shout out to him, I thought I'd do something more tutorial-wise. Uh, he, by the way, has a great tutorial. I'm going to put a link in the description of how to get started on this server. What I'm going to look at is the roles that are available and what you can expect from those roles. Now, Hoy World itself doesn't, on the public service, it doesn't massively enforce play your role. With a few exceptions of if you weren't to at least try and play your role, you might get a bit of a telling off. Uh, EU3 or a Holy World in Vance is a completely different kettle of fish and I'm not going to cover that here because I don't personally play that for two reasons. One, time and two, I hate Ace. So anyway, let's move on. So <clears throat> you'll see the servers on here and again, the video and the link will show you how to get onto these servers much better than I can be bothered. So there are a bunch here. You'll notice we have EU 1, 2, 4, 5, seven which is a test server um now eu1 is altis it's always popular as you can see eu2 is tenoa for some weird reason at the moment i'm not sure why it used to be altis seems that they've changed it uh, and that used to be fairly popular depending on the night uh, eu4 is uh tenoa which was always it's been tenoa for some time it's very unpopular and EU5 is Malden, which is the new um, map, and it's it's pretty popular at the moment. I quite like it. Um, so what I want to do is basically demonstrate the classes or roles and limitations of them, weaponry mainly, and what you can expect if you were to play your role or not. So I'm actually going to jump onto this test server because that way I won't bug people. So. I'm going to be back in a second once I've logged in and put the password in. So here we are on the Malden server. As I said, it's empty, so I don't bother anybody. And I'm in the lobby. Now, don't spend too long in a lobby because you will be booted for lobby idling. And if you're repeatedly booted for lobby idling, you can risk a temporary ban. So don't do it. Um, so I'm going to make sure I get out of here quick enough. When you get to the lobby, you will see that there is a lot of options of what you can actually be. Um, I'm going to cover squads Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo. They're all the same. There are specialist squads a bit further down. Um, EOD, Recon, Snipers, CLS, which is Combat Lifesaver, FSG, Fire Support Group, and Vortex, which are the pilots. For now, I'm going to cover this because this is probably where you're going to end up if you've just bought a uh, armor three if you just bought armor three and you're a fantastic pilot i don't know what you've been doing unless it's just carried over i guess from armor two but you should know enough about this anyway so yeah standard group has a squad lead a medic repair specialist two auto riflemen a grenadier a marksman and an anti-tank guy um now each of these has some degree of specialism with one exception which is the squad leader. So we're going to jump into the squad leader and that's going to be our base level that we're going to start at. Everything else is sort of judged against this. Every other role can do what a squad leader can do and more. So let's have a look at him. We're going to jump in and see how things go. I will be back as soon as it's loaded in. So here we are with our squad lead. I'm just going to show him off a little bit. Now, this is the basic gear that he gets, and he's pretty much good to rock as he is. Um, but you can tailor it using the arsenal if you wish to. Now, if you've never used the arsenal, there is an option under, I think it's under training on the main screen, to go in there and you can fiddle around with all sorts of weapons and vehicles in like a virtual environment. Um, and it's a good way of getting your head around guns, weapons, and all sorts of stuff. You can also build your characters in there, so to speak, and save loadouts that games that support the arsenal allow you to use. Invade Nanex on a Hoy World is one such thing. So 
just if anyone's intrig intrigued about Invading Annex 3 or Invading, Invading Annex uh, Advanced. There you go, a bit of info about it. That's much more Milsim, by the way. It's not strictly Milsim, it's just more so. It's more structured. These servers I'm on, uh, 1, 2, 4, 5, are public. They're a bit more chaotic. They're good for jumping in and playing. Don't expect masses of team play on them. But you can team play on them. Don't think you can't. You can, but don't expect it. You need to find the right people to team up with. Anyway, back to the point. So, yeah, if you find one of these guys, there's one here. There is, I believe, one over here. And there's the one down there. There's quite a few of them all over the place. Then you can walk up to them and you can activate the arsenal. You can also change your view distance settings in here and if you're new to the game you might want to drop the terrain to low uh, i've only recently been doing that just to see if it makes that much of a difference how quickly i can spot enemies because grass can get in your way in that i'm not sure i like my videos to look pretty so i tend to have it higher but you know i've just been trying it out recently so yeah you can change that to low which means there's less grass and stuff in front of your face and so on you can change your view distance and stuff they all have impacts on varying things so yeah, come here and you can click the arsenal. Now, before we do, squad lead. Normally I tell anyone, if you're going to pick a role, look what equipment they've got that's unique to them that nobody else can have and try to make sure that you tie stick something along those lines because it's important to your role. Unfortunately, the squad lead has nothing about their role that is important to them. And that's because the squad lead has no specific abilities that is unique no specific weapons that are unique the role itself is basically a rifleman now you might be given the opportunity to squad lead if you pick the squad lead role but you can just as easily squad lead if you're a medic or an anti-tank guy or whatever people will probably on the public side of things maybe assume if you're in a squad lead i've had it before where people assumed i was in the squad lead role i'm happy to be a squad lead and that's sometimes the case but these guys are the basic most basic role you can have if you choose this no one will expect you to do anything you can just do whatever the hell you want however the hell you want within reason i mean don't go on team killing and stuff like that so with that in mind a basic character if we go into the arsenal has access to a bunch of stuff but there's nothing at all unique about them so their rifles are the most basic rifles that you can kind of get per se there's no unique long-range marksman or lmgs or anything like that that are available to this class now gamer you might say that's not true i can straight away see a mark 200 um, LMG and I can see a car 95 grenade launcher and I can see a mark 18 ABR this might change in updates but as it stands at the moment they're there kind of by mistake you cannot use them I will demonstrate this these by the way are all apex weapons so if you picked up armor and didn't pick up apex you cannot use them but anyway mark 18 abr standard in the game you, you know anyone can sort of use this so to speak as in it comes with the vanilla game but if i click close now i've picked that for my character it disappears you cannot use a marksman weapon unless you are a marksman or a sniper and this character is not as i said he is the equivalent of a basic rifleman same for the grenade launcher close it's gone from my back same for that uh Mark 200, lovely looking little gun, gone. So you can't do that. That's just not an option. So if you see them in there and they don't look like you should be able to have them, it's because you can't. It's just a little bit of a mistake. So what these classes can have, or these roles, well, they can have any basic rifle um, and SMG. Uh, so it's up to you what you want to pick. There's really no you know fast rule fast and hard rule here i would say that good choices that's good but you're going to have problems the ak with um ammo in the field because no one else is going to have one of these guns so you're not necessarily going to find additional magazines for it i mean i'll say no one will have it but the chances are other people aren't going to have it 
Uh, AKM is a waste of time because you cannot put any kind of attachment on it. Which is a crying shame because I like AKMs. Same for that. And it's 5.45, so why even bother? It's probably the weakest rifle in the game. Um, you can have these, but again, you're not really going to find ammunition. Cars are not well used by the enemies. Maybe on Tanoa, but overridingly, they aren't. Um, so you're not going to be at any kind of advantage. And being a 5.8 rifle, meh. Katiba, beautiful little gun. I think they're cool. Um, and you've got no problems if you can get close to an enemy you've just killed you can take his ammunition off him all the enemies typically use this uh, so no problems there for this class for this role there's no reason to go for a carbine over a full length rifle because you'll have more range so always go for a full length if you're going to go for a squad lead because as a rifleman you just there's no point going for a carbine it's too you know look at the the range is dropped and also you can't have a um, bipod. You can't have that Mark 20, 5.56. I think they're ugly as hell, but yeah, there's nothing wrong with them per se. Um, but yeah, just not, the only difference to that is camo. Um, you can't have that with a grenade launcher. The MX itself, lovely weapon, brilliant all round weapon. No reason you shouldn't take one of these. You can have no problems with ammo off friends. Uh, or just dead comrades or if a vehicle pulls up there'll be some of them probably in the boot somewhere i personally would 90 percent of the time go with that uh can't have the mxsw as much as you might think you can you cannot uh or the mxm because it's a uh, marksman rifle don't ever ever pick a one of these they're just a waste of time i'm sure there's a reason that they're in and i love them as in look that just looks awesome but no don't ever pick the s-star it's only for underwater shooting spars nice and accurate um but i think i'd rather have the 6.5 over the 5.56 um yeah they're all right i mean they look cool i just i just think that i'd rather have that punch from the 6.5 round trgs i think the trgs look cool i love them uh, but again it's 5.56 i mean if you're going to go 5.56 you might prefer that over the uh spa especially if you've got apex um and the type 115 i think is a serious option if you're going to be just this class because you have a 6.5 with a 0 0.50 under barrel and that's beastly I use it more so as a short to medium range kind of shotgun option, you know, as in like get close, you'll down somebody in one hit with that most of the time. And it's not bad for taking on um, very light vehicles. You know, you can actually put enough rounds from this into an Ifrit and it will stop it, but you may get wasted while you're doing that. But it, it's an option. Um, so I actually have a build with this gun. So yeah, I, I like that. I like that a lot. <laughs> um, but yeah, so sidearm, I don't bother with ever. There's no point in having a sidearm due to the fact that most of the magazines for these, along with the gun itself, um, are going to weigh the equivalent of probably one to one and a half, maybe two magazines for an MX if not more so one magazine for an mx which weighs 10 i believe is better than carrying one of those that weighs i think about 10 15 something like that 20 maybe can't remember exactly um so for the weight of one of them plus it's ammunition you can probably just take three or four more magazines for this which is 90 rounds rather than say I don't know, 30, something like that. So th there's no reason to ever pick a sidearm. And this is not Counter-Strike. You don't need to switch between count. You know, you can reload pretty fast in this game rather than whip out a pistol. It takes a while to whip out a pistol. So I mean, I've got one here. Let me just quickly demonstrate. That's the time it takes me to get out a pistol. 
that's time it takes me to reload. Not much in it. Yeah, it's a little bit quicker to pull out that pistol, but it's probably not going to save your life. You know, I can understand in other games, this ain't the one. Um, so don't ever bother with a handgun. Personal opinion. Maybe, maybe if you're a sniper with a dedicated sniper rifle, one of those is worthwhile because the sniper rifles are very slow to fire and not great up close. But even marksman rifles are absolutely fine up close. So, yeah, I wouldn't bother with those. Maybe sniper only. Um, now, the rest of the stuff is irrelevant. You pick what you want. You know, go for probably the most protection or the most ability to carry it, whatever you want. That's totally up to you. Um, uniform, again, it's completely up to you. Don't wear, I don't even know if you can anymore. But yeah, don't wear anything that identifies you as the enemy. Um, I might be all taken out now. You used to be able to wear enemy helmets and all sorts of stuff. And it, yeah, it's going to cause, you know, people shooting you, team killing. Backpack, depends on your role. I mean, I often don't bother with a backpack. I can usually get enough into my uniform and vest to be happy. Um, but if you want to wear ammunition, by all means, go with a backpack. So, um, and then you've got the things that go in it. So you, you know, you've got different scopes. Um, not, I don't want to go overtly into these, but um, the Arco, Urco, and Arceo, all pretty much the same thing. Uh, it's just horses, of course, which you prefer. Oh, and the MRCO is a variation of that. It is different, but it's pretty much the same idea. I don't think I can use that sight. Or that site? No, it's gone not. How about I say I didn't even realise they were there? Yeah, so you can't use most of the time it wouldn't even let you pick them, but for some reason it lets me pick the DMS and that, but you can't use those, so don't even bother. These are all short range. Uh they're short range as well. I would say to anybody ever, pick an RCO, MRCO, ERCO, or ARCO. Just go for one then on your rifle. Uh, these are okay, don't bother with those because you're going to take um, these, you're going to take those, there's no point. IR laser pointers, pointers not a bad choice. A um, lot of people use them, it's not so much in these days, but a lot of people would use them probably about a few months ago. At night people would have these on and basically it's a great way of designating that you are friendly, not enemy, because the enemy don't really use them. Uh, but that's the only benefit of them. Sound suppressor. Yeah, they're all right. They could be useful. They look cool, I guess. Um, really up to you if you want to bother with one or not. Um, and then bipod. Well, yeah, why not? If you've got a full-size rifle and you're not going for a um, carbine, which I guess I don't think there's any point, then yeah, grab yourself a a bipod because you know if, you won't always get the chance to use them. But if you do get a chance to use them, they are really, really handy. So yeah, I would suggest take a few grenades with you. There's no limitations on the grenades that you can carry. A um, few smoke maybe, RGOs overridingly. I wouldn't really bother with these IR grenades too much. Um, I think the reason I cannot carry any of that, if I had a backpack, could I carry most of that? No, it seems I'm not allowed to carry half of those things as well, which is... Oh, well, I didn't pick a backpack, that's right, yeah. So you need a backpack for these. Again, most of these, absolute waste of time. That, that, useful. All the rest, you probably won't get much choice, chance to use. So I won't bother. Um, you're just wasting valuable space. Satchels are good for taking out towers. Uh, always take a few first aid kits with you. The rest of it's relevant. You can't use it for this particular role. And if you want to take ammo that's not for your weapon in your hand or your pistol if you were to take one then you can come in here and take additional rounds the only purpose of this would be if you wanted to carry say some missiles for somebody um or you wanted to carry uh, maybe some ammunition for an auto rifleman otherwise just carry your own ammo you know you're not really expecting, unless you're squadding up with anyone, there's no point to go, oh, I've magically got a missile in my backpack in the hope someone might use it. So that's it. I mean, like I said, there's not a lot to this. You, you, you pick what you want and you play as you want. However, 
you can slightly dual roll and by that I mean that you can take any of those weirdly you can take any of those anti-tank solutions now you can't take the Titan which is the mother of them you know the big bad but you can take a PCML RPG 42 or an RPG 7 and sort of dual roll so if you want to be a sort of anti-tank rifleman or light anti-tank rifleman might be a better way of putting it you actually can um and it's it's completely viable to do so so i will demonstrate by loading up my squad lead with an mx have i got one with an mx yeah um the 115 is quite heavy the ammunition for it so that's why i've not particularly gone through now this guy is built for maneuverability um so he's got his rifle and his helmet and so on and so forth he's not got a backpack for that maneuverability but it's also for versatility so if i actually go well i would like him to be able to provide some light anti-tank support and when i'll pick a pcml for him i'll give him a backpack uh one of those and i will pop in a couple of rockets i'm actually still maneuverable this bar here will show you how much you're carrying so I'm quite, I'm close to the limit. I'm going to get tired quickly, so I won't be able to sprint much. You can run like this for as long as you want, but I won't be able to sprint much, and I'll need to take a long time to recover. And in the bottom, you may not be able to see it um, here. There's a bar, and that fills up. It starts out empty, it goes green, then goes red. Um, but I am actually now viable as an anti-tank guy. So there's nothing in that, so I could take one more but that might put me over the edge of weight let's have a look if i take one more pcml missile no i'm, I'm actually okay Oof. <laughs> sprinting is pretty much out of the question so if i sprint with this character he should get exhausted pretty much immediately Uh, no, not too bad. Done. That's it. Sprints out the question. I've got to run like that. So across the battlefield, that ain't going to be great. But yeah, so if you want to play anti-tank, but you haven't, um, you can't pick the anti-tank role. This is a nice variation. Light anti-tank support. Uh, I've got a ton of ammunition on me. I've got RGO grenades. I picked these because if I wanted to actually be a um, squad lead, it's quite handy. I've got a laser designator on me with batteries in it. Um, night vision and all that so i could pop a couple of these smokes in the bin and probably take i could probably take one more magazine for that or probably another grenade um yeah which is all cool so that's the squad lead there's no expectation on this role whatsoever it is a basic rifleman that can dual roll they all can dual roll same way doesn't matter which role they all can do this well apart from the anti-tank because He's already doing it. But every other role can dual role as this. A marksman can do this. So remember that. But some you probably wouldn't want to dual roll with. I don't know what's going on with that moth down there as well. Anyway, that's the squad lead. So when you come into this and you've never played before, this is a great sort of start kit. Just go in and grab yourself squad lead and jump in and you don't have any expectations. Fine. If you want to have a try with a bit of anti-tank, you can. All of those are viable anti-tank options. This one has a lock-on feature um, and can fire sort of, well, dumb fire or whatever. So you just point and shoot and it will go where you pointed at. Um, the RPG-42 only has like point and shoot. So wherever you aim, fire, that's where it ends up um and the rpg7 is exactly the same you'll be able to carry more rounds for the rpg7 so you can see down here it's impact that has a much bigger impact the pcml is slightly less i love these actually but they're much they're short range you're not going to hit much with this over oh, let's see if i were to show you this you're looking at about 500 meters beyond that you're not hitting much you can but it's difficult uh, PCML again you're probably not hitting much beyond I 
can't remember the range of this thing actually. Uh, if anyone can, let me know. It's not not massive. Titan can go over a thousand meters. This thing can't. Um, and the RPG seven again, it's sort of limited, but you can carry much more ammunition for it as well. So in my backpack here, I can carry like four plus one there. So I've got five rounds for that. The RPG forty two. Same as the PCML, you could probably weigh, maybe take a slightly heavier backpack, but you might balance off the ending up in a crawl. Uh, or you could just take high explosive rocket if you wanted to. That's uh, anti-personnel. So yeah, that's the basic rifle that's squad lead. No expectations really expected of you in this. Just, just play as you want to play. So the other roles all have some sort of specialism that you'll to a degree be expected to do but don't think it's milsim and you know you must do exactly that so let's look into the others and head back so here we are with the medic and the medic can use to nutshell it up every weapon that the squad lead can use and no more and no less so they don't have any real downside to picking any of the variations that the squad lead can be um and they can't use any more weapons they don't have access to anything else if you go into your inventory nothing about here stands out as anything special nor here um so you know don't that's not going to help you discern what you need to do for this class but this actually does the backpack is what i use all the time as my backpack as well giving you a medikit and a first aid kit now <coughs> excuse me as i say you can you can use any weapon any combination of anything you so desire again i don't use a pistol uh, i usually have a laser designator i might have nice sunglasses but you know that the rest of it doesn't really change too much i'm going to go show you my setup that's my dead body for my squad lead so my setup uh, i've got two um we've got the tropic version i've, I've got traffic of a lot when it says heavy for it it's the type of armor i'm wearing i've gone for slightly heavier armor um so let's go for the m that one let's just load that in because it looks cool right so this is my guy with an mx and i would probably advise an mx you can save a bit of weight with an mxc but it's not a ton of weight it's not loads and you're losing the capacity for the bipod so if you look here I'm not even at full weight capacity for my character, so I'm fairly maneuverable. The MXC would probably drop that a little bit more. Um, and I'm wearing a heavier vest as well um, for protection purposes. Uh, enhanced combat helmet for protection purposes. So I've got as much protection as I can kind of want while still being maneuverable because the medic needs to try and stay alive so i think that's fairly important um so we can do absolutely everything squad leakham and he's got some grenades to keep him alive he's got 10 magazines but yeah this again it's the same as the standard one that you get um and the reason that i ensure i have this i could have more but like i say i'm not too I would like a bit of more maneuverability and the longer this bar or you know the less white in this bar the more maneuverable you are the longer you can sprint for basically and sprinting from cover to cover is useful for a medic so yeah this is needed you must have one of these if you don't take one of these as a medic then people will probably look at you a bit gone out um the reason being, I don't know why it keeps taking me out of my uh, inventory. Anyway, yeah, the reason being is that is required to heal people. And as it says in the thing, unlimited number of uses. Allows you to heal anybody to full health. So you can just walk up to a person and heal them as many times as you need to until they're fine. Uh, this relates to gunshot wounds, not downed players. Um, the first aid kit does the same thing you don't think it does uh sometimes it heals you fully and sometimes it doesn't and every time you use a first aid kit you lose one so it's you know upon usage it disappears so i could use that 10 times 
Now, a medic doesn't actually need first aid kits to heal anybody. So that might seem strange, I've got them. Because he's got a medikit and that will do the trick. And if you look, the medikit takes up literally half of that, weighs 80, uh, or takes 80 mass units up. Uh, this carries 160. Um, so if I was, if I did that, I would, could heal somebody 10 times or people 10 times and then I'd be out. To do that, I can heal them infinitely. Uh, if I took all of those, which I'm not going to do, put them there, I can still heal people infinitely. What this empowers me to do is the two of them together, and you must have both, you can't just have first aid kits, you must have a medikit, it allows me to revive downed soldiers. So if a soldier goes down and you, they get a little marker on the screen, I can revive them. To revive them, I need to go over them, scroll wheel, which I won't show you here. Obviously that guy over there was dead, so he wouldn't have been useful anyway. And you'll see an option to drag, carry, and revive. If you click on revive, you will then go into a position where basically you're trying to do chest compressions on the person. There was a horrible, like, almost mini game that was in there. I got rid of that, thank God. But you're out, you're out of, you can't do anything for a few minutes. Well, minutes is wrong. For about five to ten seconds, maybe, you, you're stuck in that position, reviving the person anyway. Um, and then they get up and they're fine. Uh, you might need to heal them sometimes afterwards. Other times they're absolutely full health and it doesn't matter. So yeah, um, you can do that. But every time you do it, you will lose a first aid kit. You, Upon revive, you will use up a first aid kit. So I, if I healed or revived 10 different soldiers, I'd have none left. Um, so you think, why not carry more? Like I say, it's the maneuverability and first aid kits aren't that hard to come by because everybody carries one. And if you're carrying a first aid kit, but you're on the floor dying, I'm going to take your first aid kit to get you back to life. Um, or at least one of them. It's kind of that simple because, you know, you've got a choice. You can die or you can be brought back. So I will very much take, you know, medics prerogative in my personal opinion. If I'm going to heal you, I'm going to take whatever I need to do that um so that's why i only ever carry 10. um you could have a different backpack you could carry 40 if you really want to they're not too heavy another 10 might take me to here and yeah so i could carry a load but then the heavier backpack would bring this up as well um i find this a beautiful balance now about playing your role if you play a medic and don't take a medikit you're gonna be frowned upon they're not we're not expecting somebody to rush around if i bring the map up let's say i'm here and somebody gets down here i'm not expected to run all the way out here and heal this person it's crazy if i'm a an ao and there is an ao there and a guy gets shot here and i'm here i'm not expected to traverse the entire ao some way to get to him and bring him back to life that's just crazy uh, but if i'm here and a guy gets shot here or even here it would be rather shitty of me to not go back and bring that guy back to life ditto if i'm here and there's a guy here or maybe even here you know within reason within range and it's safe to do so you'd be expected to play your role even if you only pick the medic because it's the only slot open you know try to play it try to be a medic because you know if people blatantly you know if i was stood there you know say there and there's a down soldier just here and i didn't even make an attempt it and then just carry on towards the ao you will get pulled up on that you know but that's it you know like i say if you're here and there's a down guy over here or over here or over here or back at base you know, you're not expected here also if you are at base and for some reason some weird team killing stuff happens don't waste your time reviving the person they can respawn in seconds so it's absolutely pointless you know so that's it also if you're en route to somebody to save them let them know in text chat or something don't you know because otherwise you might be wasting your time if you see somebody downed over here by this and you're like oh you know chopper's en route gonna try and save you they can't respond um so hopefully they'll see that and not disappear 
because the worst thing that happens is you're here there's a guy here you bolt down to him you've got to keep stopping because you're being shot at you get to and as you get to him he respawns um and it happens a fair bit so unfortunately they can't tell you when they're about to bleed out either so that's about it for this role you can dual roll as i say but you're going to be probably carrying too much if you do that i wouldn't ever bother as a medic to dual roll um and if you're a medic and you haven't got a medic on you because you're too busy dual rolling as an anti-tank guy people will get pissed off if you can't heal them at all and you just run past them they'll accept if you've got no first aid kits you know i've got no first aid kits but they might have one so you know always run up to the guy who's down and check his backpack he might have a first aid kit on him last thing about this role is i always take tons of smoke grenades because they're great for covering areas so you can get in nice and low or something and actually revive a person and then get out oh another bit of advice never as a medic if you're playing your role properly stand next to anybody with an anti-tank weapon because the second they fire that thing the vehicle's going to turn around and hammer the actual area that you're in and you'll get killed so always be away from any groups of people that can get blown the crap out of that's it for this role nice and simple really so here we are as a repair specialist and again playing your role well it's a weird one first of all the only thing that you need for this class is that that's the only notable thing everything about this class otherwise is exactly the same as a squad leader exactly the same as a medic when it comes to weaponry no different weaponry and scopes just the same doesn't change so that's all you need to ensure you have on you if you're going to be one of these you need a backpack and you need a toolkit it won't fit in your um, uniform i can demonstrate that by taking all that out and trying to put it in but it just doesn't it doesn't fit in your uniform so yeah that's that's basically it there's nothing else about this role that is special and you can do a role if you want again if you are a repair specialist and there's a close by vehicle you know within reason then you know if someone gives you a shout out it's worth you going to help them but there's a lot less chance of you um knowing even that vehicle's disabled let alone being told about it going to it so on and so forth it happens a bit i had a disabled prowler a wheel out and somebody came and helped me um and i asked for it but meh. you know you're not going to do a lot of repairing with a repair specialist so it's kind of a weird role consider yourself a slightly more unique um rifleman really uh so if you treat it in, as such you're a rifleman with a backpack and with a uh toolkit in it now you could i think i have a repair specialist i don't really use them very often let's have a look we've got one yeah we go with an mx let's load him in so there we go here's my repair specialist what have i got going for me usual stuff first aid kit some grenades fair whack of grenades actually more than i probably need and i've put a few smoke grenades just in case i needed them if i was repairing a vehicle and a few explosive charges Ta-da! now that's it that's all i really need i can do the job fine if i wanted to i could remove these and all of these and then go and say uh, i'll have a PCML and I'll take a PCML missile in my backpack and if I pick select that I should load one in as well I think yeah so I've got two PCML missiles boom we've not going to be sprinting anywhere too much but I can still repair I've got two rockets for this or I could have maybe took an RPG and three rockets and Bob Jungle there you go dual rolled again so it's not you know again you, you can do that nothing no reason not to there is one specific thing i find really good about this class and again it doesn't matter whether you're dual rolling or not is that because you can repair vehicles it means that you could take something like that or you could take a tank more importantly i would say tanks apcs that kind of thing and you can sort of become the gunnery crew for it uh whatever you want 
you become very invaluable in a tank crew because you can repair the vehicle and I don't actually recall where tanks are even if there are any um, but yeah so you, you can become a bit of a one-man army in that sense and that's actually quite nice um, so yeah that's the real benefit of being a repair specialist is if you can get on a tank crew you're invaluable uh, because you can repair the vehicle once it gets damaged depending how damaged it gets that is um, and if you are even on your own you can take the tank out and repair it etc etc there is a tank there I don't think I can access now though as you can see they've got sandbags all around them you can't actually get into them there I think only there for defensive purposes so you can't actually get into the scorcher you can't get close enough um so yeah when it comes to vehicles they're actually really good because you can repair them simple as that really you don't need anybody else so you can quite happily just man a tank yourself and off you pop um so that makes them valuable and useful but they're not highly sought after as a role they go quite low is anyone going to be really really peed off if you didn't play your role properly they get a little bit annoyed but not massively so i would advise always take you know the, the repair kit if you can but beyond what you do beyond that completely up to you and if it's within reason and there's a request to repair something try and have a go but don't put yourself in like you know firing range or anything like that to do it but otherwise yeah basically rifleman that can repair things 